Greetings and welcome to Mentor Me Memorable Moments where we teach you a total life balance which includes good health. Good health is good mental, good spiritual, good social, good financial, and good physical health. Each component is intertwined yet interdependent creating a single health entity. Yeah, so I am Tracy Everett Duncan, your host, and I'm here with my co-host. William Craig, the third. All right, always the third. And this is going to be a fantastic program tonight. As usual. Because we brought in all the tenants. Yes. And you want to know who we are? Please, tell us. We are Mentor Me Memorable Moments. Mental health. Why do you keep doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different outcome? That's insane. You're stuck. So let me help you get the stuck up out of here. We talked about the angry black female unleashed. We talked about how derogatory that statement is. And it's amazing how some people don't think that there's a problem with that statement at all. Mm -hmm. What is the perception that I have about this woman that causes me to call her an angry black woman? And I believe in most cases, what you will find is she's not an angry black woman. She's probably just an angry woman because of whatever has happened or whatever's going on, the foolishness that needs to stop. And the bottom line is, is that if you were placed in the same situation you could probably, probably be angry too. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello. Social health, stop. Wait a minute now. It's not all about empowering the people. It's about growing businesses, creating entrepreneurships, and synergizing communities. I was teaching it was long-term unemployment and long-term, uh, she was on um, uh, public assistance for many years. And her son was getting beat down going back and forth home. So I asked her the question. I said, so you want him to get shot, killed, or what? That's right. Before you move. Oh, I can't move. We've been there for this many years. I'm on Section 8, and I get some. I said, so you don't, you care more about Section 8 mm -hmm. than you care about your son getting wow. back and forth to home? That's right. Financial health is not all about the Benjamins. Let us teach you money management techniques and help you get ready for the currency change. It's coming talking to you about goals and, and destiny and spending and money and you're saying, well, I don't have any of that. I'm trying to teach you how to go get it, right. how to find it. I mean, it's right there. Broke has nothing to do with money. Wow. I want you to know that. Tweet and, that one. Yes. Broke has nothing to do with money. Physical health. It's not all about the exercise. It's also about your heart rate and healthy eating. You know, the importance of detoxing. I don't yes. think there's a question of should I detox? Indeed. I think it's when and how yeah. often. How soon I can I get yeah, started? I will, yes. <laughs> this is actually a, a prosthesis of a breast. And I got this in 97 when we were teaching down at the Salvation Army. Okay. And so in this little plastic thingy, there are two types of... Um, tumors. I want to know if you can detect them both. When wow. you're feeling that hardness mm -hmm. and how large that is, mm -hmm. that's a danger. That, that's a different stage of the tumor or the cancer sure. um, that requires a, an extensive amount of treatment to have it reduced. Wow. At that stage, it may be too late. Spiritual health. Everybody has to be connected to a spiritual being. It doesn't matter if we serve the same one. You need to be connected so that it will sustain you during challenging times and keep you balanced. Mental health. There's a doctor in the house, Dr. Michelle and Felicia Jameson. Social health. William Craig III and Dwayne Ross. Financial health. That's me, Tracy Everett Duncan, but you can call me Ted physical health. Welcome Dion Shaw Bush. She's going to take your breath away. And spiritual health is the premise of our program. It's all of us. So connect with us. Mentor Me Memorable Moments. You can find us on social media, www.mentorme411.com, Twitter, at MentorMe411, and Facebook, Mentor Me Memorable Moments. And our home is right here with Listen Vision Studios 
And we are live at Sunday, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time at WLVS Radio. We'll be looking for you. Welcome to Mentor Me Memorable Moments. I am your host, Tracy Everett Duncan. And I'm your co-host, William Craig III. And we want to welcome all 150 nations and all 50 of these United States of America. That's right. We're back with our physical health program, and we are here with our physical health coach, Dion yes. Shaw Bush. Takes my breath away. <laughs> so happy to be back here again. I get so excited when this show, when it's my time, I get so excited because there's a wealth of information that is we are ready to give to you, That's so right. be ready. That's right. right. You know, we have been on social media pushing this segment out because we have been hoping that we could get this guest speaker. She's a busy person, yes, but we've been able to lock her in just for this hour, and we want yes. you to know that she's going to be talking about diabetes, and yes, we've had diabetes yes. discussions on this show, but this mm -hmm. is our professional. She Amen. knows all about yes. it, the ins and outs, and we're going to be asking some questions that that you probably been asking out there in social media as well because there's a new term to diabetes and I want to know if that is true or not and if so then what should we be aware of how should we be taking care of our body etc but if you want to see the other programs on diabetes mm -hmm. then go to our website mentorme411.com you'll find all of the programs um, there as well as the bios on each of the um, health tenants and uh, you can go to our YouTube channel just search for mentor me for one one and you're going to see me tracy everett come up with all of the videos from there yes, and indeed. have fun get your tea your latte yes. or whatever your preference is kick your feet up and just enjoy the videos but we're going to turn this segment over to you coach d because i know you're excited about this as much as I we am. are yes, absolutely <laughs> so um again this guest sharon hawks Hi. she Hi. is <laughs> a registered licensed uh, dietitian she is also a certified diabetes educator. So I know we can always talk about diabetes because things that we've read, but I wanted to bring the expert. This is who she is, what she does, and there are some myths out there about diabetes. I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't eat this, and so da, da, da. So I wanted an expert to come on the show mm -hmm. and to say, no, this is the truth. Yes. So, Sharon, yes. how I'm are here. you doing? I'm wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. I'm happy to be here. Good, Thank good, you good. guys Love for having me. Absolutely. Wonderful. So, tell us, and I'm always saying that, I, I, you know, I was always say that diabetes is in the bloodline. Is that truth or is that fiction? Well, you know, when it comes to the black community and what we call type 2 diabetes, we'll discuss that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it is somewhat in the bloodline. Okay. Um, it All has right. a lot to do with genetics. Type 2 tends to be the most genetic type of diabetes. And, um, yeah, yeah, okay. like it or not, it is in your bloodline. All right. All so right. I just wanted to know. And I want yeah. to know about pre-diabetes. <laughs> I want to know about the type 1, type 2. So should mm -hmm. we go to the first slide? Or I'm going to turn it over to you and yeah. talk to us about diabetes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and feel free to ask questions as we go along. Okay. okay. <laughs> sure. So what we're going to be talking about today is the keys to prevention, treatment, and reversal. Um, there's a lot of discussion about can diabetes be reversed, oh, and, and we will uh, address that today. And can it be prevented, um, okay. which is also one of the biggest questions out there. Because as I said earlier, it is in your bloodline, but does that mean because it's in your bloodline, you're required to uh, develop this condition? All right. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the things I always like to explain about diabetes is to understand how prevalent, how serious this condition is um, in, in our community. You have 4,384 new cases or diagnosed wow. every day. That's, that's in the a United lot. Wow. That's every day? Every day. Every Whoa. day. And you have 195 non-traumatic lower limb amputations are performed. In other words, someone loses a limb, right. a toe, because a foot right. to diabetes. And could that be because they're not taking their health um, seriously, the doctors tell you do this, do that, do that, and they're like, oh, this, that's not going to happen to me, so I can keep doing what I want to do. Well, I think that's what the general population's um, um, opinion is about that, but okay. I find being in this field for many years and working with diabetes day to day, what I find the biggest issue is is just a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. I'm wondering yeah. also if it's wow. maybe some of these cases are um, diagnosed after the fact maybe the person has gone through such a trauma that they are admitted to the hospital and oh my gosh when the test results come back here they are or there's an amputation because mm -hmm. they didn't know or anything like that yeah. well typically it doesn't happen that quick typically mm -hmm. um type 2 diabetes particularly the one we're talking about because that's the one that affects 90 to 95 percent of people with diabetes that's a hard um one. This is kind of slow moving thing. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the issue of amputations and going blind and um, heart disease, those type things, this is not something they wake up one morning and mm -hmm. having a major problem. It's been okay. going on for a while. Mm -hmm. So is it progressive? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Okay. So let me ask you this then. Would you say there are some amputations that maybe take place that are unnecessary? Um, I would say 100% of them are unnecessary. Oh, all right. Um, oh, I got the best woo! one. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and the reason I would say that so much. Oh, thank you so much you. for that, Bill. The reason I would say that, I, I you know, you always can't say 100%, pretty close. Um, a lot of it's going back to they're not taking care of themselves, not mm -hmm. understanding the condition, and waiting too late. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There are some conditions that may occur because of blood clot and different things, but your typical amputations have thank been because you. of extreme mm -hmm. elevation mm -hmm. in the blood sugars yes. for a long time yes. and yes. not taking care of themselves. Right. So these conditions come, up, come about because of the lack of um, treatment of the disease. Okay. okay. All right. Great. All right. Whew. Can we go back to that slide, please? Mm -hmm. Those are numbers. I like, mm -hmm. I like I know. that. A lot I of like good numbers. numbers. Yes. yes. So again, 128 people begin treatment for end stage renal disease. This means they're going dialysis. Okay. Right. Yes. Um, and and you have 50 people develop blindness and or or diabetes go blind or diabetes a contributing cause of their death. Mm -hmm. What we know mm -hmm. is that um, my slide is off there a little bit. Something happened there. But 50 people um, go blind every day. Wow. Diabetes is one of those things that affect the um, um, the vision a lot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I like to tell people, just because you have blurred vision does not mean you're going blind. Thank Absolutely. you. Say that again. Absolutely. Tweet that one out. <laughs> so, 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 ding so, that one too. Yeah. So, so please don't get worked up when your vision goes right. blurs and here and there. Um, that's just a, 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 a kind of manifestation of the blood sugars being elevated. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about going blind, we're talking about long-term of untreated um, um, eye disease and not seeing ophthalmologists and mm -hmm. getting treatment and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm. Um, so this is not something that's going to happen overnight if the person has been actually monitoring their blood sugars and keeping things under control. But yes. at the end of the day, 839 people will die each uh. day um, from diabetes, or more specifically, diabetes is a contributing cause of their death. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So how often should a person see a, a, an eye specialist? Uh, well, typically, if they've been diagnosed with diabetes, I would say at least twice a year. At least and of course, if they're having something else going on, it would be more often. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, it would be more often. Um, it does ha not have to occur to have a problem with your vision, but you're going to find a lot of times when you have one condition, understand, it usually leads to the others. Mm -hmm. yes. So when someone's dealing with um, end-stage renal disease, in, um, dealing with blindness, they're also having problems with circulation that may lead yes. to amputations. Mm -hmm. It's almost a conglomerate of everything coming together at yes. one time. Mm -hmm. okay. Now understand that something like renal disease, there are other things that drives renal disease, um, more specifically mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Yes. Okay. So that's one of the complications mm -hmm. of diabetes that I find that oh, may come along by itself mm -hmm. um, because it, the blood pressure itself is what a spurred on the disease at a higher rate yes. than the other conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. We can go to the next slide. Yeah, stress. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. 
So, so, so again, if we look at the um, U.S. population, we have 29.9 million people in the United States have diabetes. Wow. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a huge number. Now, think about this. You have 9.3% um, of the U.S. population as a whole has it, but 8.9% of melanin. Now, get this, though. In D.C., where we sit, that number is actually lower. Really? We're actually wow. quite surprised that yeah. the D.C. DC rate of diabetes <laughs> is slightly lower mm -hmm. than in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Right. And okay. you have a higher population of African Americans in the District That's of Columbia. Right. Um, so you would think so, right? Right. Um, but but the rate is a little bit lower. It's a little bit per capita, mm -hmm. right? Wow. Now, even about the, the, the slide back up with the type 2, mm -hmm. I always thought type 1 was more prevalent, but I hear type 2 is. No, not at all. 90 to 95% of people yes, with diabetes have type 2. So when we look at type 1, it's only 5 to 10% of yes. individuals have type 2. Um, the reason we hear, hear about type 1 so often is um, you recognize that most Excellent. of the ones who are diagnosed with um, type 1 initially are children. Right. So a lot of the focus, emphasis, Was and money, for that matter, goes into type. diabetes, right? Uh, well, we used to call you it juveniles. Call it. We only mm -hmm. call it type 1 now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. But even older uh, folks get it now. But I'm looking so. at that bottom stat. It yes. says um, undiagnosed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Undiagnosed. See? That's my million. big million. Mm -hmm. So, so 8.1 million are undiagnosed. The reason I think that number is so high is because a lot of times we don't know what the symptoms are. Mm -hmm. right. um, a lot of the symptoms of diabetes, and I'll show them to you later, uh, mimic other conditions. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the person has ignored the conditions, they're just not putting two and two together to come up with the fact that it may be diabetes. Mm -hmm. but, but that brings me back to what I'm always mm -hmm. preaching to my customers, my family. Mm -hmm. You have to know your body. Right. You have to know. If, if you're getting these symptoms, you're like, okay, I've had it frequently. You know, mm -hmm. maybe I just need to go see a doctor. We talked about the five myths mm -hmm. that... Um, mm -hmm. The, the five ugly habits that you're doing that could be hurting your heart, not seeing your doctor is one of them. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I'm going to put it off because it's okay. I'm too busy to go see my doctor. Mm -hmm. And you Absolutely. go in and see your doctor immediately. Maybe that can just yeah. Um, yeah. alleviate. Well, yeah, and diabetes is one of those things. The earlier you catch yes. it, the more aggressive you are with it, the better chance you have mm -hmm. of controlling it and Absolutely. even reversing it. You know, I was doing a lecture. I lecture all the time, and I had a gentleman um, doing the question and answer period said to me, you know, I haven't been to a doctor in several years because mm. I'm a very healthy person. Okay. And I said, so said the man who was told he had three months to live. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Until he showed Absolutely. up to the doctors. Right. How do you know if what you're doing is actually working if you don't show up? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And that's so preventive me, maintenance, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. not, not just preventive. It, it's it's kind of a, a, a clarification of okay. what you're doing is actually working. Okay. Absolutely. Because I like of, that. Because if you don't go in to clarify, mm -hmm. you know, I make the point, you wouldn't invest your money, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and not mm -hmm. take a look at what's going on with it. No. Did you just put it out yes. there and just oh, leave no. it? Of course not. <laughs> so, so I make the point about your health. How could you say if what you're doing is really working if you ain't verifying? Oh, right. I like that. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so, what is diabetes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking at the slide, what is diabetes? Diabetes is a disease that keeps your body from using food to make energy. Insulin is a hormone. Most of you have heard about insulin. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it makes the pancreas, and this pancreas is an organ in the body that produces this insulin, okay? okay. And it helps the body to convert glucose, sugar, into energy. Okay. So people with diabetes either don't have enough insulin or the body can't use the insulin the way it should. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at the end of the day, there's a big misconception about what actually happens in the body mm -hmm. when you develop diabetes. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I were to ask the typical person with type 2 diabetes, what is diabetes? They'll say, um, my pancreas stopped working. And mm -hmm. I would say, if your pancreas stopped working, you wouldn't be living. <laughs> the pancreas has quite a few functions, and, mm -hmm. and, and producing insulin is only one of them. Right. So it's a requirement for, for the pancreas. And even in that statement um, that, well, it's not producing insulin. And then I make the point where, let's look at this a, another way. Even if it's, if it's not producing insulin, yes. that's actually type 1. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So type 2 that's is a whole different insulin. mechanism mm -hmm. that's okay. going on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next slide. Okay. Next slide. So the so most common types of diabetes are type uh, 1 type diabetes. Type 1 and type 2. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about the type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. as I was saying, um, you see the figures again. Only 5 to 10% of people diagnosed with type 1 mm -hmm. and about 90 to 95% are diagnosed with type 2. So wow. we're looking at type 2. Whenever um, I do most of my talks on diabetes, 95% of the time is about type 2 because that's what you're looking at in most people, yes. particularly in the African-American community and minority communities yes. as a whole. We're looking at mostly type 2 being the major issue.
it's all right. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you have a slide in there. You're going to break down and talk about mm -hmm. the differences. Yeah of type one. So you're going to start with type one. Yes. I think that's one yes. I'm, I'm really interested in. Type two mm -hmm. is as well, but type one yeah. is yeah. one that mm -hmm. you people kind of shun from. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. So, so type one diabetes, someone with type one diabetes needs insulin shots every day because his or her pancreas who does not make insulin. Mm -hmm. So I just made the point that the pancreas is the organ that produces insulin. This is this hormone yes. that helps the body to um, usher in, if you will, sugar glucose into the cells to be used for energy. Okay. The problem is with the type 1 something has occurred yes. either some type of um, autoimmune response or something or a genetic condition that has caused the pancreas the beta cells mm -hmm. in the pancreas mm -hmm. to top, stop producing insulin wow. or producing a very small amount of it mm -hmm. so at the end of the day it doesn't matter for the type 1 how well they eat or don't eat how much they exercise or don't exercise they will have to take insulin wow. at the end of the day no. only thing they can control is how much mm -hmm. insulin but okay. they will not be able to not take insulin because the, the, the defect is the pancreas is making little or no insulin mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. and is, this is the one so the type 1 could we say that this one is in the bloodline is it hereditary or because I look at I have mm -hmm. friends and I have mm -hmm. specifically I'm gonna say family members mm -hmm. that um, they're okay say their mom didn't have diabetes but the mo mom had a twin mom had um, the sister had diabetes the aunt the uncle and now this child who mm -hmm. has type right. one um, diabetes and so would you say it's genetics yeah, uh, well, part of type 1, type 1 is interesting. I still hold to the fact that type 2 is more genetic. Okay. Type oh, 1 wow. has genetic components. Okay. Okay. To that's it. Good to know. So that's a big part of it. But they actually, there are some autoimmune things that occur in the body, and they suspect there are certain viruses or, or, or certain wow. um, in, environmental factors that may induce. Type one diabetes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. okay. So, so okay. There's, there's a, a gamut wow. of things oh, that can cause type that's one. That, 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 I, I that's know you have show. something. Yeah. To yeah. Say. So, <laughs> so, so let me ask about. I know we moved on to type two. I want to ask one more question about type one. Mm -hmm. Could it have? I mean, could it lie dormant, and then um, situations could bring up the, I guess, the symptoms of well, well I, I wouldn't think of it so much as lying dormant mm -hmm. um as to um certain conditions that occurred okay. environmental or, or, okay, environment. or virus wise okay. or mm -hmm. hereditary wise that caused the type one okay. to come on okay. so i wouldn't say it lies dorm dormant that way i got a sense where you're going with this and you're going to be surprised about <laughs> something i'm about to tell okay. you about the right. two All but right. let me explain type two and All then right. i okay. want to make a point about All something right. that i think is going to really surprise you Fantastic. Okay? so type two diabetes mm -hmm. and someone with type two diabetes the pancreas make uh, makes insulin, but not enough, or the body may needs help, need help in using the insulin. Mm -hmm. This is due to a condition called insulin resistance. Now, at the end of the day, what insulin resistance is, is basically the body is resisting allowing insulin to do what wow. its role mm -hmm. is. Okay? Yeah. So what's interesting about that, I want you to catch this. Okay. The body is actually producing insulin. Yes. It's just not able to use it as effectively. Wow. Right. Okay. So that's one of the big biggest misnomers. So people would always say the issue with um, type two is that the pancreas is not making insulin. That's not true. It's actually mm -hmm. making insulin. The body is just not able to use it effectively. This okay. condition called insulin resistance. And look at the slide that's up now. Insulin resistance is due mostly to excess central obesity. Wow. Oh my now there God. are a lot of other say issues. Say that again. Wow. Yes. Central obesity. <laughs> 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 now, now let me say this. We don't know all the causes to type okay. 2. There's okay. other factors that come into play okay. because I have patients who walk in all the time who are very, no, I'm saying all the time, uh, frequently, that are thin. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, but what we know the majority of people, if you were lined up 100 people in front of me and ask me to pick out the type 2 diabetics, um, um, excuse me, people with diabetes. Yes. Okay. Um, I like diabetes. Diabetes. People. <laughs> people with um, persons with diabetes. Yes. Um, I could probably pick them out with probably 95% accuracy wow. without knowing, but nothing but seeing them. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay? Wow. Um, because we know there's a certain body type that um, kind of leads to um, type two. Hmm. And majority of my patients who come in when I, uh, when we talk about type two diabetes, yes. they'll tell you right off when the blood sugar start to go up, the blood pressure start to go up, cholesterol yes. start to go up, yes. when they start to pick up weight in, yes. this, in the center area. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so it's that a big issue. Section. So yes. one of the things to know about type two is not just about being overweight, but where you carry the weight. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Wow. Is it that? So wow. we would say midsection is the culprit. Mm -hmm. Midsection, something we okay. call um, visceral fat. Okay, so V-I-S-C-E-R-L. Right. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. As one of my patients said, my visceral rolls. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so it is a central obesity is one of the biggest issues okay. because this is what also puts stress on the organs and that type thing too as Absolutely. well. Mm -hmm. There's research that suggests that when it comes to um, the fat on the body, visceral fat, which accumulates itself in the center, mm -hmm. poses the greatest risk to your health overall. Right. Yeah. But they Absolutely. go on to say that the fat down the lower body, something we call the pear shape, mm -hmm. um, poses no major risk to your overall health. So um, I was actually reading a medical journal that um, the title of the um, um, article was Big Butt, Less Risk. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, okay, they were just making the point. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. In some neighborhoods, yes. <laughs> some neighborhoods. <laughs> so, so actually, no matter um, 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 how large you are at the bottom, when it comes to metabolic health related to um, heart disease, diabetes, um, fatty liver, those type things, they're more prone to people who carry the extra weight mm -hmm. here wow. in the center. Wow. So let me ask Coach D this question. I know we've got a lot of slides yes. to be pushing through. Wow. But um, when someone is trying to then exercise to mm -hmm. lose weight mm -hmm. and they are diabetic and obese and this mm -hmm. is the visceral areas giving them problems, mm -hmm. are they able to lose that weight in this area or is this something that they else that they have well to and do. then Sharon she's a fitness expert as well oh, well, yeah, what, I'm gonna, well yeah. what I'm going to say is when with my clients with that it's not just the focus is not just going to be the midsection mm -hmm. you're talking about the total body mm -hmm. so you have to look about nutrition you have to look about their stress levels how's their you know their day you have to look at all of that so mm -hmm. you can't just zero in on okay let's yeah. do some crunches mm -hmm. and that's going to help your mm -hmm. problem no it's the total body boy yeah. I hope you all are yeah. hearing that yeah. out yeah. it's there. the total you know, body and pressure off yourself yeah. Yeah. absolutely and, and, it, and it does when we look at exercise you know actually mm -hmm. I have a slide on that so yes. so I'll kind of um, stay to that part of it mm -hmm. because one of the biggest thing is and, and do y'all notice as well? You can't spot reduce. You cannot. Mm -hmm. You can spot cannot. tone, but you can't spot reduce. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you but hear we, that? But yeah. we do know that when you lose weight, and 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 we 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 proven this um, um, clinically, mm -hmm. that the first place the body want to take it from is the center area. Yes. Oh, so okay. so you do okay. tend to lose That's weight quicker yes. Yes. in the stomach. People always say that's not true, but every time they start to lose weight, when I ask how the weight loss is going, the first thing they do is the, what? Grab my waist, the waist. The, yes, okay. my pants so, are falling off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I think the body's attempt to try to get you back to somewhat kind of <laughs> equilibrium, yes. due to that's probably the most unhealthy type of fat to have on your body, is the reason it tends to take it from that place first. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. So what's so, the cause? So, so, so the mm -hmm. bottom line to um, um, type two diabetes and ultimately insulin resistance and ultimately type two diabetes come from two sources: genetics. Mm -hmm. I think I make the case there, yes. and lifestyle. And lifestyle. And here's where lifestyle mm -hmm. comes into play. <laughs> Genetics sets the stage for a disease, but lifestyle controls oh, wow. the outcome. Okay. And I know y'all can tell by now that I'm Southern born and bred. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, and, not and, you. And so I have a little saying for everything. They say it one way, and the Southerners have to find their own way of saying Absolutely. it. And what I love to say is, is um, a genetics starts the car, but lifestyle drives it. Wow. Okay. 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 Wow. All right. Wow. Okay. So even though you've been predisposed to it, does not mean you have to get diabetes. Okay. But understand, right. you put the lifestyle things in place, mm -hmm. and then there's an issue. There it is. Wow. Okay. All right. So borderline. People always talk about the pre-diabetes. Right. That's a new buzzword. It's yeah. a new buzzword. It yeah. is. So pre-diabetes and borderline diabetes are the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, we used to call it borderline diabetes, but you know, um, as well as I, when you tell someone they're borderline anything, what do they do? Uh, uh, nothing. Yeah. Borderline nothing. means they, yeah. I just missed it. I'm yeah. on this side of the fence. Yes. I'm not on yes. that side of the fence. But I've okay? heard people tell me that. It's like they said, oh, they said I'm yeah. borderline, so yeah. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you can't still live yeah. the lifestyle yeah. that you're right. living. Yeah. You have to yeah. do something mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. and, and what's interesting, we, we changed the term to pre-diabetes for several reasons. One of the biggest issues for pre-diabetes, when, when someone when anyone says to me I'm pre something, I get nervous about what yeah. is coming out oh, of that. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So it kind of makes you more in tune to that you have an issue. Yes. And some of the new research over the last 10 or 15 years have blown this whole theory out wow. the window that when you're borderline, it's no big deal. Oh, because no. we have learned that your cardiovascular risks have increased even during the pre diabetic stage. Absolutely. You'll be amazed at how many patients I have walk in to see me in the pre diabetic stage who have already had a heart attack or a stroke. Oh, my wow. goodness. So, so this yeah. is not but a those time. Are some of the complications of diabetes. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And it, it's vicious if you don't take it, if Absolutely. you don't put Absolutely. it under control. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's vicious. Absolutely. Wow. All right? Mm. So, so pre-diabetes is a term used to distinguish people who are at increased risk for developing diabetes. Mm-hmm. And people with pre-diabetes have elevated blood sugars, but they are not high enough to be classified as diabetes. Oh, okay. Progression okay. to diabetes among those with pre-diabetes is not inevitable. Studies suggest that if they just lose some weight mm-hmm. and make some lifestyle mm-hmm. changes, they can yes. turn their blood sugar All back right. to normal. See, that's okay. But be clear. Easy. It, well, it sounds easy, but here's the thing. There are specific things you need to do, and I'm going to touch on some of those in order to do that. There's a misnomer on what do you need to do to control the Absolutely. blood sugars, too, mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely. And so the thing is, they can turn their blood sugar back to normal. They reduce their risk. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what we're looking at is someone who falls in a certain category. Looking at the chart, you see here yes. that acceptable range, someone fasting. Overnight, yes. they fast for eight hours. Overnight, they come right. in, um, have their blood sugar taken. Mm-hmm. If they come in on 100, that's acceptable at being normal. Good. There's also another test we call the glucose tolerance test. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a two-hour mm-hmm. challenge test. And some mm-hmm. of you may have had that done where you drink this horrible sweet stuff. Right. I used to describe <laughs> it as um, um, flat soda with sugar added to it. Mm. And then I realized I was making this way too complicated. It's syrup. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> One word, syrup. syrup. Okay. syrup. And then have the audacity to give it flavors like it's going to help. Okay. okay. But at the end of the day, what they're doing is this. They're giving the body a, a, a large amount, um, 100 grams of pure glucose, 75 to 100 mm. grams of pure glu- mm. glucose. Well, and they ask the body, say, now, um, pancreas, mm. let me see what you got. Mm. Wow. Okay? So, so they're waiting to see, can the pancreas process this sugar at the rate it should normally? Right. Okay? And if it can, that means things are, are good. If, if it's not, then it means... We have a problem. Okay, so mm-hmm. when is this test generally given? To someone who mm-hmm. says, the doctor says, okay, mm-hmm. you are pre-diabetic, mm-hmm. let's find out. Or someone just saying, could you test me to see if I am a candidate for diabetes? Okay. When is this test given? Well, well, um, it should be done at all your physicals. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, so I need to talk to my doctor. Yeah, um, um, trust me, it's probably me. being done. But the problem is most people don't know how to read the lab work. Oh, and don't know what they're looking no. For. Okay. All so, right, so I just <laughs> to get educated <laughs> on that. Most people okay. as in who? The, cl- the, custom, the, um, the, the patient? Or, or, the, or the doctor. Yeah. Oh, my so, gosh. So, so one of the things I, I love to do with my patients coming, I require that every patient come in and have their recent lab work. Okay. Because not only am I looking at it to verify where they are, but I also want to explain to them all the labs that are yes. linked to Absolutely. diabetes, yes. hypertension, cholesterol, those things, too, Absolutely. as well. So when we're looking at that test, they may have a random blood glucose that they did in the morning where they say, okay, they took your finger stick and mm-hmm. what number do we have? Mm-hmm. And when they send it to the lab, they will also have a, a, just a random for that time. Okay. But something called the hemoglobin A1C, I'll explain that later. Gives mm-hmm. us a better idea. So mm-hmm. if you take a look at this with pre-diabetes, now I want okay. you to follow this. Pre-diabetes, this person's fasting blood sugar is going to come in between 100 and 125. Okay. Someone with who've done the two-hour glucose tolerance says, as you know, normal would be 140, and pre-diabetes would fall somewhere between 140 and 199. Okay. So as you're looking at these numbers, you clearly see they're outside of the normal range. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you take a look at the last um, area there, to be classified as diabetes, they must come in at 126 wow. uh, milligrams per deciliter mm-hmm. or higher. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mm, so keep in mind, though, that um, the standard is you have to be tested at least twice to verify that you have diabetes. Not with the same test. There's other tests we can do as well. And then with a two-hour glucose tolerance test coming in over 200. So you Mm. you will test for this? Uh, No, actually, actually, typically your doctor would do it. Your doctor would do it. Your doctor would do it because they have to run through the lab. But you can read the numbers. Yeah, I can recommend and different things to a diabetes specialist. But typically by the time they get with with me, they've already already been diagnosed. But because I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, I see patients for hypertension, cholesterol, weight loss, yes. irritable bowel, all those things too as well. Mm-hmm. So you'll be amazed that I've actually caught patients coming in with another condition who actually wow. have diabetes. Wow. wow. Because okay. there are certain That's things wild. about them that automatically said to me, we need to check them for diabetes. Yes. Wow. Okay. And, and a lot of times I'm looking for them to, to find out they have pre-diabetes. I come mm-hmm. back to even my surprise, they're in the diabetic range. And oh never my knew it. goodness. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. right, so so again, we were talking about the study suggests with weight loss and increased physical activity, you can actually return the blood sugar back to normal. Right. But as I made the point before, mm-hmm. these people are already at an re- increased risk for heart wow. disease and stroke, even in the pre-diabetic mm-hmm. range. So we've learned wow. we cannot wait till they're in full diabetes before they respond. Right. A lot of physicians over the years, no fault of their own, that they would actually go, hmm, no big deal, right. like pre-diabetes. But now I'm seeing patients now, tons of patients with pre-diabetes. And wow. in fact, 
like we're looking at um, getting a program pre-diabetes um, for prevention and Absolutely. reversal and that type yeah. thing because we have got to respond quicker because right. these numbers keep increasing right. and it's we because that, we're missing it early on. We saw the 8.1 yes. million, right? right? They yeah. don't even they know. Don't. Yeah, so don't even know. We're going to get this know. show out there because they. I, that's why I was just so, I'm just like eager to get this program mm -hmm. aired mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. people need to know. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So how, how can you prevent diabetes? Um, you know this. Keep the weight under yes. control. Here's mm -hmm. what research has, told us, has, has shown us. If you lose just 5 to 10% of your body weight, it can reduce your risk of developing wow. diabetes by 58%. Wow. That's, no, no, that's no, no, a good no, number. No, but mm -hmm. this, here's the part you need to get, though. Right. A lot of times when you go into your health professional clinicians, your doctor, mm -hmm. they, they use height and weight charts, you know, and say you need to lose 75 pounds. Yes. You know, and I explained <laughs> the research says just with a 5 to 10% five to weight loss, it's mm -hmm. enough to reduce your risk significantly with just Absolutely. a weight loss alone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this gives patients hope because they have yes. this big number. The person like myself who specialize in, in weight management and in, in the GI tract, a lot of times um, we're looking at um, understanding that it's only a small amount that reduce your risk for major diseases. Right. Doctors, because in, in their defense, nutrition and weight management is not their area of specialty. It's not. Right. So, right. so, so they're using um, height and weight charts. The truth is, in a, in a, in a good um, um, dietitian <laughs> nutritionist office, we don't have height and, how to hide and weight charts. They're yes. irrelevant. Okay. Yes. Because there's okay. other factors we're going to look at. Okay. Right. So when I say to a patient that if you lose 5 10% of your body weight, it mm -hmm. can reverse the condition, that's manageable. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's 200 manageable. Pounds. Absolutely. 200 that. pounds, yes. you're only talking 10 to 20 pounds right. versus um, they're telling you you need to lose 75 pounds. Mm -hmm. yes. And the aren't those height and weight charts based on uh, a... A demographic that really isn't reflective of the yes. community absolutely. we're serving. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And, and that's a whole nother lecture. Yes, that's a whole <laughs> nother lecture. Yes, yes. 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 That they can give general ideas, yes. but mm. at the end of the day, everyone's different as to what's normal for them. Absolutely. Mm. Because remember, I told you about the patient coming in at thin. Right. The truth is, mm -hmm. because of their body type, the reason their body is responding that way is because their body isn't even used to 10 or 15 pounds right. being on it. That's As right. with okay. someone who's used to being heavier, they're mm -hmm. going to have better outcomes than, than, than someone who wow. weight was a lot, lot lower mm -hmm. uh, when they were younger. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Next slide. Yes. So how can we prevent diabetes again? Keep the weight under control. Mm -hmm. um, be physically active. Now, um, Deanna tell you, yes. we, we harp on this a lot about how important it is to combine both aerobic and strength training together. Mm -hmm. You know, you have one group want to strength train all the time. You have one well, just don't want to do cardio all the time. Yes. And, and the key <laughs> but is we you need, need that both. balance. You need both. Yeah, you, Especially you, you when we get older, too. Now, mm -hmm. If you're older with diabetes, mm -hmm. it, you have to get that str strength oh, yeah. training. You have you to. Have to cause our, yeah. our, our body structures change after yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and you have to keep the lean body mass there. Absolutely. And so everything don't shake and jiggle around. But here's the thing. A lot of people don't know, though, that, and, and Dion can attest to this, for every mm -hmm. decade um, a life, a woman over 30, she loses anywhere between 5 to 7% of her lean body mass every mm. decade. This is a normal occurrence. Normal. It's nothing she's doing. Mm. It's just a normal occurrence. But mm. understand, if she um, strength trains just 20 minutes, three days a week, for six weeks, she can gain back a whole decade of muscle loss. Wow. So if a she stays decade, that again, a whole decade. Whole decade. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. the key is, and, and, I, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this, one of the things we know about diabetes too as well, even though um, cardio would help lower the blood sugar immediately, mm -hmm. research has indicated for, to us that long-term effect yes. is strength training. Strength mm -hmm. training. Because mm -hmm. the issue Absolutely. is where the defect in the body is occurring that's causing the problem with diabetes mm -hmm. is Absolutely. occurring on the muscle. So if you strengthen the muscle, you tend to have better response um, with, with really? um, being I, able to I process the glucose. Mm -hmm. Yes. I believe yeah. that. Yeah. So, so put both. that strength training in. Yes. So what are the risk factors of diabetes? Um, family history, diabetes, parents, sibling, a child. Mm -hmm. I like to say first degree relatives. That yes. would be your parents, your siblings, your mm -hmm. grandparents, um, your first degree uncles, first degree aunts. Yes. Now, what would surprise most people in general? Which family member do you think would tell you your greatest risk of developing diabetes? In other words, if that family member developed diabetes and you don't have it and they're a first degree relative, mm -hmm. you should get really concerned that you're at risk. Who would you think it would be? I would say the grandmother. Um... So you saying the food? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to process it. Yes, 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 yes. It's not a yes. trick question. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Okay, okay. Um, the child. The child. What do you mean, child? So you said who would tell me who's the, more uh, their first degree relative? Okay, first parents, degree. Mm -hmm. grandparents, right? their siblings, right? their first degree uncle, their first degree um, okay. cousins. Okay, uncles and aunts, cousins. 
So you said who is at greater risk? Who, who would, would tell, tell you? you? Your oh, oh, um, probably the grandparent. Okay, mm -hmm. it would be your sibling. Sibling. Oh, really? wow. Okay, I'm why did you guess that? Say that? <laughs> she didn't ask me. <laughs> Okay, so the sibling. the sibling. Okay, it would be your sibling. You understand? You have two parents mm -hmm. coming from two genetic lines. Okay, okay. So how do you know if it actually crosses over the genetic lines? Uh -huh. If one of the siblings get it, one of the sibling mm -hmm. get it. Right. It's all your your okay. your risk just increased significantly. Wow. Mm. I see families from siblings from the oldest to the youngest down to the youngest. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if it gets out of line as to who developed diabetes, because one's living a little bit better than other. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I have somebody go, what, what my oldest brother? He doesn't have diabetes. Right. So I can, right. and I, I immediately say, I can tell you how your oldest brother's living. They mm -hmm. go, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. They're watching their weight. They're right. eating healthy. They're mm -hmm. exercising. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got wow. it? Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, there was a slide before, diabetes, what are the symptoms? Mike, can you put that one oh, up yeah. very yeah. quickly? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everybody understands what this. to look for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so um, what are the symptoms of diabetes? Um, frequent urination. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is one that sends a lot of people to the doctor ultimately with a diagnosis of diabetes because right. what's happening, we're not talking about they're just going to the bathroom more often. Where the problem occurs that alarms people is in the middle of the night. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. You, yeah. you, you, you go to uh, bed and, mm -hmm. and you, know you've had, you know you've had problems getting up in the middle of the night having to urinate. Mm -hmm. So you decided, I'm not going to drink anything after 7 p.m. Right. right. Okay. You head to bed at 9 or 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay. So, what are you okay. laughing at? <laughs> so, so about 10 30, you get up, you head to the bathroom. Okay. I'm, I'm clearing the bladder. Right. We're good. Right. Mm hmm. You go to sleep, but I don't have later, you're up again. And it's like wow. that all wow. night. After wow. about the fourth or fifth time, the mind says, I don't know what's wrong, Something's but wrong. something is clearly something wrong. Is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so they go to the doctor, not expecting me diagnosed with diabetes, but wow. please make this stop so mm -hmm. I can get some sleep. Absolutely. And use your thirst, and you can understand how people can think the reason they urinate more often because they're more they're thirsty. thirsty. Mm -hmm. I won't go into the whole um, physiology of yes. it, but the mm -hmm. thirst and urination are actually not directly related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the extreme hunger can never mm -hmm. seem to get enough to eat, unusual weight loss. You haven't done anything to lose weight and you and lost 15 or 25. Mm -hmm. I'm always fascinated, wow. particularly in the African American community. You haven't done anything to lose weight and lose 10 pounds and you see that as a blessing. Okay. okay. Understanding what I know about um, the physiology of yes. the body. Yes. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I know about That's the physiology serious, of though. the body, if I lost 10 pounds and was not trying, I would get horribly yes. afraid. Yes. Yes. Because there are be some concerned. conditions yeah. that be really concerned. Be, concerned. be really concerned. Because Absolutely. if you just don't lose weight just because you was thinking about nope. losing you weight, not. you do must not. create a deficit. Okay. You got it? Wow. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we need to clear some of the risk factors for diabetes again or yeah, we can move something on. Something else I want you to see is this slide. Okay. Um, can you mm -hmm. see that slide and see what's going on there? Yeah, look something at the, called yes. acanthosis. Of the neck. Yes. Yes. Something called mm -hmm. acanthosis necrocons. Mm -hmm. When we look at the um, um, risk factors for diabetes, we kind of slipped, um, skipped over the slides a little bit, but the acanthosis necrocons is a kind of giveaway. You remember I told you I had a couple people come into my office yes. and, and even though they come in oh, for one thing, mm -hmm. I'm looking at them. I see the central obesity mm -hmm. we've talked about mm -hmm. and then I see this telltale thing around the neck we call wow. acanthosis necrocons. It's mm -hmm. kind of darkening. Yes. As you can see, sometimes the skin even come across um, almost velvety, like a snake skin, wow. almost right. a different texture. Right. And that's, yeah, that's used an indication of high insulin levels in the blood, mm -hmm. which is an indication of prediabetes insulin resistance. Wow. Okay. okay. And so, but some people think that, you know, no, I'm just heavy. I have a thick neck or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, 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 or they're not cleaning colors. themselves as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's some of the, the, the misconceptions in the black community and mm -hmm. some horrible things have been done to people in the name of thinking that there's something that they're doing and not something that's actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I went to a dermatologist uh, several years ago and mm -hmm. that was one of the first things that he, he counseled me about he said you should have an even tone of your skin yes. Yes. Uh, from, from head uh, yeah. all the way down yeah. Yeah. And, okay. yeah. and it was very interesting because no one had ever said that to me yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so now you know I'm looking at folks and I'm going Oh wow, you know, I'm, and I'm seeing the differences and yeah. where, mm -hmm. like you say, around the neck, around the neck. that have those dark spaces. Yeah. I'm going, yeah, okay. Yeah. But that's and, not and would that be the only area? No. For well, actually, you can find in the skin folds. Okay, too in, as the well. skin folds. Okay. in the skin folds. Okay, in the skin folds. But that's not something that all um, persons with diabetes would have. Um, no, not okay. at all. Not okay. at all. Okay. all right. And and typically you will see it a lot more in women too as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I won't go into one other. Um, believe it or not, one of the other um, risk factors for diabetes is something called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Oh, and so okay. we see this a lot in young women. Mm -hmm. And so they would probably have that telltale sign with the acanthosis wow. necrocons. Mm -hmm. And what's mm -hmm. scary okay. about um, PCOS is a risk factor for diabetes, but it can render a young lady infertile. 
So oh, it's important my. to know wow. that this condition yes. is going on. Oh, yes. Okay. Wow. Absolutely. Okay, okay. next slide, okay. please. Okay. So the complications of diabetes. These are the things that scares people with diabetes the most, okay? So we're looking at heart disease and stroke, high mm -hmm. blood pressure, blindness, kidney disease, nervous system disease, amputation, dental disease, and complications during pregnancy. These are major conditions, life-threatening conditions yes. in, in, in a lot of cases. So these are the results of it. And All without right. it, um, without addressing these things, we're going to have a problem mm -hmm. later on if they don't get their blood sugar under control. All right, All right. Okay. Okay. So, so low blood sugar. Uh, okay. This is one of the things you're going to see <laughs> during diabetes where the person experiences low blood sugars. Now what is going on? If you take a look at the next slide, you'll see some of the um, um, symptoms, if you will, of what's going to happen wow. when you have low blood that. sugar. Mm -hmm. So you have headache, shaking, sweating, feeling tired, weakness, hunger. You know, it's interesting though, um, I think one of the misconceptions is that it can't be low blood sugar if I'm if I'm not having all these symptoms. In mm -hmm. reality, most people may have one of these symptoms. Wow. You know, okay. and 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 some of the symptoms people have when their blood sugar is low mm -hmm. may not even be on this slide. I had one patient who said the only way he knew his blood sugar was low was his tongue tingled. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So That's I, I, I yeah. So I tell that people to. One. To get to know your body, as get Dion was saying earlier, right. so you know what you're looking for and what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Right. and what we always hear too is always test, mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. If you have questions mm -hmm. about where your sugar level yeah. is, yeah. test. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, you really need to because if you if you move ahead to the next slide, you understand when well how you treat the low blood sugar. We won't mm -hmm. go into that too much, but a lot of times um, people go overboard with treating the low blood sugar, mm -hmm. taking in too much. Mm -hmm. So this would actually would call would require a little explanation on um, how you eat with diabetes, maybe I can Absolutely. come back another time and talk about that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But one of the biggest things is not going overboard because they take in too much carbohydrates to treat the low blood sugar. Now mm -hmm. they don't went from low blood sugar to high blood sugar. <laughs> yeah. So, so, it's so, so, true. so there's the a hyper, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's a system of, of how to treat yeah, the low blood absolutely. sugar to do it in a way where you correct a problem without creating another. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. This is good stuff. Yes. All right. Next yeah. slide. This is yeah. good stuff. So hyperglycemia, high blood sugars. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to look at these symptoms. You wow. got thirst, excess urine, thinning. Um, um, losing weight, blurred vision, hunger. Do you notice something about the high blood sugars and the low blood sugar symptoms? The thirst? Well, well, there's several that are the same. Blind, blurred vision. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Excess yeah. urine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the Hunger. blurred vision. It throws people so off. It throws them off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, well, what I'm getting at is this. How you treat one and how you treat the other are totally, Two di totally yes. different. Absolutely. So no. if you don't know which one it is, that's you right. treat it the wrong way, oh, it can be deadly. Oh, yeah. that, that's why I said it you always deadly. test to find when out it, what it is. When in doubt, you test. That's Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Next slide, please. This is good stuff. I hope you guys are really taking note of this. So, so. So what causes high blood sugar? Of course, you don't have enough um, insulin in your body. Mm -hmm. You may uh, mistake your diabetes medication. We're, we're big components of having a problem with taking that medication. Oh, yes. You ate too much at a meal or over time. Mm -hmm. You don't get enough exercise. Mm -hmm. Maybe a medication you're taking for something else. Mm -hmm. You get sick, get a cold, Can be, um, get the flu, mm -hmm. right. may actually be causing right. that. Trigger it. Or right. you're sick, have an oh, infection. say that or again. You're under, yes. Or you're under stress. Yes. All those mm -hmm. things, stress. too, stress. can contribute stress. to high blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So wow. understanding necessarily because the person has overeaten. Okay, because mm -hmm. we're always saying, you need to stop eating. That's why your blood sugar is so high. Right. It could actually be other things that may be actually That's good. right. That's okay. right. Okay. Yes. So again, um, and, and, and this is just talking about some of the things you need to do in order to address that high blood sugar. So again, taking your medication, maybe need the meal plan changed, those type things. Mm -hmm. And checking, mm -hmm. you may be sick and don't know it. So always, when you see things happen with your blood sugar out of the norm, mm -hmm. please respond to figure out what's doing it. And don't get stressed because it's high and you eat something that's Absolutely. spiked it high. Yeah. Or, yeah. Don't get stressed Yeah, because the truth all. is, if you know what did it, right. <laughs> stay away from it. Stay away from it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We're more concerned when you don't know what's done and you're doing it all the time. It's Absolutely. happening all the time. It's going to be important. Exactly. But research says if you get 80% of your blood sugars are within normal range, you'll mm -hmm. receive a normal reading when you go in for your mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be 100% perfect at it. Right. Okay. okay. But we can't have you doing 2080. That's right. Okay, we're going to do right. at least 80% yes. or more of the time you're doing what you're supposed Absolutely. to. Absolutely. That's right. So, so as we know, what foods have the greatest effect on the blood sugar? Most people know this. It's carbohydrates. Yes. But what they don't know the, is what carbs the are. The types of carbs. Yeah. 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 So you got good carbs and you got those. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, 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 so let me carbs. show you. Um, I want you to see this slide. And, and hopefully it's the next the one. Carbs. Mm -hmm. okay. Everything <laughs> there it is on right there. this page. 
It's yeah, called hydrate. Like it's not yeah. it, 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 outside the meat, inside the bun, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what surprises people is juice and fruit are carbs, just like yes, that's right. right. And bread that's is right. gluten and, and potatoes. So they get a, a, a false sense of what they think carbs yeah. are. Yeah, okay? mm -hmm. those blue were those blueberries. Yes, yeah. um, they, they are. They, they are, are fruits, so they are carbs. They now, carbs. what gets people confused wow. is that um, I don't like to use the term good and bad carbs, but mm -hmm. what I will say, some carbs are lower, lower in right. carbs and. Mm -hmm. and Sugar, the other some are more complex and others gonna respond mm -hmm. differently. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you cut down on your simple carbs, we know this already. Cake pies, candy, right. cookies, I, sodas, I still right. call those um, the bad carbs. Watch the undocumented <laughs> calories. You know what they are. You walk <laughs> past someone's <laughs> desk, you grab a cookie, yes. you know. Yes. Oh, yes. you know yes. um, too much sugar can cause your blood sugar to spike, causing pancreas to release more insulin, and that's what causes the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, insulin stimulates the liver to make more wow. cholesterol, and, and, and again, it's gonna increase the level stress and your stress level, level yeah. too as well. Mm -hmm. All this stuff go That's together right. to cre mm -hmm. create total habit. Mm -hmm. yes. okay? mm -hmm. So right. it really is about watching, moderating what you're eating Absolutely. and being more active. And that lifestyle. Yeah, that lifestyle, lifestyle as a whole. Wow. That's the key. Yes. The next Complex slide, carbs mm -hmm. as opposed to them simple so, carbs. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've kind of narrowed it down over like the years. This. I've been yes. doing this for many years. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, a lot of my colleagues go into these long, big, drawn out, what do you need to do to eat right to be healthy for diabetes. I've narrowed it down to, to, to really three points. Yes. I joke about this. I won't go into the whole story, but a gentleman on the plane was asking me 10 minutes before the plane land, uh, what do, how do I eat um, to control my blood sugar? <laughs> and, you know, we had been on a five-hour flight, you know, okay. in the last 10 minutes he asked me this. And so I thought about that, that if I only had 10 minutes with someone, yes. what would I well, deem most mm -hmm. important to tell them? Right. So these three rules it. would be a part of it as far as the food is concerned. So okay. there's your title for your next book, 10 Minutes to Live. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you, wow. you, know, you know, I'm actually in the middle of writing writing a book. You know, my mouth to God is I've got to get it done, oh, I love and it. I am struggling with the title. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what are the three but rules to eat like a person with diabetes? I love this. Uh, people pay attention. Mm. Yeah. Tell this is, yeah. This is important. So, so the key with carbs is not to cut them out. That's one of the biggest mm -hmm. misconceptions for you. the diabetic. Mm -hmm. You don't have to cut out carbs. Mm -hmm. You spread them out. Yeah. See, as long right. as you don't overload the pancreas all at one okay. time, Absolutely. it can do its Absolutely. job. Absolutely. If you remember what I said for the type. To diabetic person with diabetes, mm -hmm. it person doesn't diabetes. mean that their pancreas, their pancreas is making no. insulin. It's right. just not using the, the insulin as efficiently. Yes. Right. So if you mm -hmm. give it time to catch up, mm -hmm. okay, by by spreading throughout the day, you're gonna right. have a better chance of okay. controlling those blood sugars. And does okay. the food okay. digest like every? Your food di digests is typically two to three hours. Uh, actually, what happens, regardless of carbohydrates, protein, and fat, right. it takes about um, four to five hours for it to digest. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So long as you keep your meal space about that far apart, mm -hmm. if you know the meals are going to be more than four to five hours apart, right. that's when you add a snack. Mm -hmm. I've okay. heard this crazy okay. rumor going around, you should be eating every two hours. I said, do that, get fat, and you'll never control your blood sugar. <laughs> well, okay. let me... Okay, okay. well, okay. We, we, so, that'd, be so, another, that'd be another show. Another that'd, show. That'd, that'd, yeah, another that'd be a whole other show. show. So, so, so speaking to the nutrition specialist, <laughs> the reason I would say that... Um, I like that. And let me explain why. <laughs> If you had the right combination in the meal in the first place, mm -hmm. you should not get hungry for four to five hours. Okay. So I'm not oh. saying, so if the person gets hungry in two hours, it's because they did not have the right combination mm -hmm. in the meal in the first, in the first place, place, which brings up the other two rules. Okay. The second okay. rule says, the first one says, um, spread the carbohydrates. The second rule says, four never allow hours. more than four, four to five, five hours, hours to in between by. your meal. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So if there is going to be, you're going to add a snack. And right. that third rule says, whenever you eat, whether it's a meal or a snack, what yes. must always be present if you're going to Say, Protein. say, I'm satisfied. Yes. Or is Protein. a good source of Amen. high and fiber, high carb, fiber and, and protein. Yes, Here's absolutely. why. Fiber gives you a sense of fullness, fullness. and these, yeah. initially Absolutely. it's going to stop you from eating, mm -hmm. okay, from overeating. Absolutely. What we know as nutritionists, it also lines the intestine walls and slows down the mm -hmm. absorption of the sugar Good and stuff. cholesterol okay. for that okay. matter Good of stuff. fats and different things too as well. Mm -hmm. So it has so many other benefits too. It helps with weight loss yeah. because again, it helps you feel full, mm -hmm. helps you yes. cut down on what you're eating. Mm -hmm. But that feeling only lasts about an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. The okay. only nutrient that has been shown to help you feel the fullest, the longest mm -hmm. is protein. Protein. Okay. okay. Protein, Protein okay. will extend that fullness for at least about three to four hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have a high fiber and no protein, you can feel full initially, not gonna last. Okay, okay. well that's good to know. The we protein need to bring extends. You back. Yes. Yeah, okay. that. Good. yes. What that is. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Again, another thing I do for my older patients or patients who don't want to get into watching their carbs and everything, I do it called the plate method. As you know, half of the plate is your non-starchy vegetables, mm -hmm. and then you have one-fourth um, um, starch and one-fourth meat. 
And then you have two um, carb torches on the side too as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. I and like if you that. want to see what that looks like, the next slide. Mm -hmm. Is that like the previous that. slide? That's, that's that. That's, <laughs> and so, yeah, so, this, so this is what mm -hmm. it would look like. Okay. Good, yeah. So long as you're staying um, along in that line, even mm -hmm. there, you can control mm -hmm. your blood sugar because the average American is half of that plate is meat, the other half is starch, and yes. then they have some vegetables sitting off somewhere on the side. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Right. So that's attainable. You want to yeah. lose weight. If you want to control this blood sugar and ultimately reverse the diabetes, you got to lose weight. Okay. And if you're not overweight, you need to stay there. Yes. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, next. Mm -hmm. So smoking and diabetes, I, just stop it. Just stop. Um, mm -hmm. If you smoke long enough, it's going to kill you. Yes. We, we know this. There's no debate about this. Mm -hmm. You have to stop smoking. I always say to people when it comes to circulation that um, problems that lead to amputations and kidney wow. issues, yes. that diabetes is one of the worst things you can have. The only thing worse you can do besides having diabetes that affects circulation mm -hmm. is smoke along smoke with it. Along. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. And, and, and now you're playing Russian roulette. Yes. Okay. Great. Wow. Okay. I like Next. this one. Yeah. So reduce everyday stress. Yeah. At the end of the day, um, <laughs> yes. if you would look at what conditions, what things render um, the greatest um, cause of your demise that you have control over, mm -hmm. we, we know stress is one of them, weight is the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are the two things that actually lead into other conditions. Mm -hmm. wow. So a lot of people don't realize how much stress plays a role in diabetes and other conditions mm -hmm. too as we, well. But yeah, so we're we going to definitely talk about that. Yes. Good, yes. good, excellent. About the overeating and making bad food choices. Yeah. So you're yeah. stressed mm -hmm. out, you're grabbing the closest yeah. thing you, to you. You got it. Comfort and this food. is one of the things comfort I... Food. Food. Comfort food. Yeah. And for years, and one of the things I write about in the book that I'm writing, I talk about a lot in the beginning, I'm working on patients with helping them to get their blood sugar mm -hmm. under control. And what I mm -hmm. realized is that what was a, what they it wasn't so much what they were eating but was what was eating them mm -hmm. wow. so um i'm also a life coach okay. so like with that. my patients i deal in whole mind body and spirit yes. right the reason they do so well is we address all those things because if i don't address the things That's that right. have gotten you there you're not going to be right. able to concentrate right. exactly. on taking care absolutely. of this physically right. exactly and ultimately you're going to repeat that pattern oh absolutely right. absolutely mm -hmm. even if i can get the weight off get the blood sugar under control right. it was very defeating for me for patients kept coming back i wasn't upset with the patient i was looking at myself what was i doing right. wrong what right. i really realized was in their defense and mine we were not looking at mm -hmm. what the biggest issue was that's right and the issue of sleep is also a big thing i'm oh, amazed wow. at how many yeah, people don't realize how, right. how much sleep <laughs> Okay. If you don't get enough sleep, six hours or more, you can right. reduce your, your your span of life by up yes. to three to five years. Research is telling us. It's a benefit. So, so, so your mind, I mean, oh, your your so cells are benefit. being reproduced, mm -hmm. and you know. So. You know, when, when I went in and did the research on sleep, I, yes. it scared me so bad oh I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I need to read the research so that it can oh, scare absolutely. me, so I can go to bed. <laughs> I, I went to bed. No, okay. I'm not perfect at it, but I'm so much better at it. Yes. Okay. yes. Next slide, please. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So the hemoglobin A1C, this is the number I was telling you about for mm -hmm. individuals with diabetes. This is the number you should have done at least um, semi-annually on a quarterly basis. This is the number to tell us if what you're doing is actually working. Right. Mm -hmm. It reflects the average right. blood sugar for a three-month period. It okay. can help the doctor determine wow. how well you're controlling mm -hmm. your diabetes. And the doc mm -hmm. again, the doc doctor should check it at least twice a year. Right. If yes. you're not in control, do it quarterly. Yes. Okay? okay. So this number is wonderful because it gives us a snapshot of how mm -hmm. well you're doing. Absolutely. You can't fake this number the right. night before That's you go right. in for your That's test. Right. Quick, fast, real fast. It's, it's, it's over a three-month period. Wow. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so right. to kind of show you how it works, these sales, I won't go into what the little balls mean, but know that pre-diabetes, as we said, range from A1C 5.7 to 6.4. Mm -hmm. Someone without diabetes wouldn't top 5.7. Okay. okay. The person with type 2 would come in at 6.5 or higher. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So is there any good, you get good news? Yes. yes. We can mm -hmm. reduce your chance of developing type 2 and, and, and being a high risk, lose weight, Exercise, medications, medication. mm -hmm. if they're must. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I make the point to people when it comes to medication. I have patients come in and see me all the time. And they're, they're telling me about their coworkers, their their family mm -hmm. member came in. You helped mm -hmm. them reverse their diabetes. Mm -hmm. You got yes. them. They lost fifty yes. pounds. Can you do that for me? Mm -hmm. The first thing I say to them, my goal is to get the blood sugar under control because that's Absolutely. ultimately what prevents um, um, complications. Yes. Yes. And as Malcolm X said. By any means necessary. So, so, so if it requires it. diet, exercise, medication, we're going to do everything that's required to get mm -hmm, you there. Yes. But I would not promise you that we're going to be able to do it without any medication. I love it. Okay. 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 So most mm -hmm. of the cause of diabetes, of course, it, is due to the end stage complications, and that's what we're trying to prevent. You have got to invest investment of resources into early diagnosis, mm -hmm. patient education, yes. prevention, and treatment. This is going to pay off for us. Okay. You're going to live longer, increase productivity, reduce and reduce the cost, the cost mm -hmm. over overall mm -hmm. over time. Okay.
So you got to control your diabetes. You cannot let it control you. All right. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. This, this was excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, so Thank you, you so much. You oh, need to reach um, Sharon mm -hmm. Hawk. Yes. Here's her information. But um, you know what? There was a question I was going to ask. going to say that mm -hmm. for a later time. But mm -hmm. the question is, I am hearing that Alzheimer is the new diabetes three. Ah. I, um, one of the things we don't have to talk about right okay. now. We're gonna come back. We're gonna bring we're gonna Sharon back. back. Okay. Absolutely. But we want to thank you for joining yes. us. Thank I you again. You wonderful. got another good one. Yes. 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 Can't awesome. wait to air this program. And you know we're coming back with our special program next Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sir Charles Carey will be here. Excellent. You know what? Until then, we need you to be, be safe, safe. Yes. Be, be smart, smart, be, be healthy. healthy. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Hey. Regular but never irrelevant